NASA allocated 2,941,394,557 US dollars to SpaceX in 2021 to build the prototype of the Lunar Lander Starship. However, over the past two years, specific updates on the progress of this lunar lander have been scarce, despite NASA's goal to return astronauts to the moon by 2026. However, there's been a flurry of new images and updates on SpaceX's HLS Starship, with NASA revealing significant progress. In today's episode of Alpha Tech, we delve into these developments. SpaceX, alongside NASA astronauts, conducted a test for the SpaceX elevator meant for the Artemis moon lander. The Starship plays a vital role in NASA's program as one of the two commercial crew lunar landers. Despite SpaceX's demanding schedule focused on initial test launches, they are actively reassuring stakeholders about their capability to undertake more intricate missions in the future. NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Doug Wheels Willick played integral roles in a recent comprehensive evaluation of a scaled model elevator designed for SpaceX's Starship human landing system. This crucial system serves a dual purpose, ferrying astronauts from the Orion spacecraft in lunar orbit to the moon's surface and functioning as a habitat during their approximately one-week stay. Furthermore, it facilitates their seamless return from the lunar surface to the Orion spacecraft, ensuring the operational success of the mission. The elevator's pivotal role involves the efficient transport of both vital equipment and crew members between the habitable segment of the Starship, located near its apex, and the lunar terrain, enabling their moon walks and essential operations on the surface. During this meticulous test, the astronauts had an immersive experience with a prototype that closely emulated the operational design of the elevator system. This hands-on encounter not only demonstrated the functionality of the hardware, but also provided invaluable insights from a crew-centric perspective, enhancing its development trajectory. Crafted and meticulously assembled at SpaceX's state-of-the-art facility in Hawthorne, California, this mock-up elevator boasts a full-scale basket section. Equipped with functional mechanical components and crew interface carefully calibrated for rigorous testing. Notably, NASA astronauts donned spacesuits replicating lunar conditions, ensuring a realistic simulation during the demonstration. As part of the evaluation for Artemis 3, the crew will utilize advanced spacesuits developed by Axiom Space, ensuring compatibility with efficacy with the elevator system. The suited crew actively engaged with and provided compre comprehensive feedback on various aspects of the elevator control including gate latches, interface mechanisms for deploying entry and exit ramps, cargo space optimization, and dynamic operations while traversing along a vertical rail system. The substantial advancements not only underscores SpaceX's strategic approach and technical capabilities, but also challenge any lingering uncertainties about their ability to meet the ambitious lunar landing deadline by 2030. However, amid these triumphs, legitimate concerns persist regarding the practicality and operational intricacies associated with the tower elevator design specifically tailored for lunar missions. Furthermore, within SpaceX's Starbase facilities, there's been an expedited pace in the development of crucial components for the lunar lander. Since August of 2023, a remarkable development has unfolded, the emergence of distinctive white-nosed cones that experts believe represent mock-ups of the HLS Starship variant, earmarked for meticulous testing. What sets these apart is their inclusion of life support components, signifying swift strides in critical testing protocols and a leap forward in the developmental timeline. Simultaneously, the company is navigating a phase of transformative design modifications for this monumental lunar lander, aiming to forge an optimal and finely tuned product tailored precisely for the mission's demands. Let's delve deeper into the evolution of these design models. Firstly, there are three significant alterations noticeable in the rocket's configuration. The foremost change is the deployment of solar panels from bays positioned atop the rocket. During the flight, these panels expand, mimicking the deployment method typical of most spacecraft. Once landed on the moon, they seamlessly retract, aligning flush with the lander's side. The second conspicuous modification pertains to the landing legs, markedly smaller and seemingly fixed in place compared to the original design, which suggested larger, potentially retractable legs. This revised approach hints at a possible reduction in weight by negating the need for leg retraction into the body. Lastly, SpaceX has strategically relocated the thrusters, 
situating them in multiple pods around the lander. These elevated landing thrusters are intended to minimize surface disturbance during lunar touchdown, mitigating the risks of debris and large rocks being propelled in the immediate landing vicinity. Notably, SpaceX achieved significant milestones by triumphing in a series of pivotal Raptor engine tests, a feat heralded by NASA in September. These rigorous tests validated the engine's capability to initiate and function under extreme cold conditions encountered during extended space missions, a crucial distinction of Artemis missions compared to those in low Earth orbit. These missions entail prolonged periods of inactivity in space, subjecting the hardware to temperatures substantially lower than those encountered during shorter missions closer to Earth. These strides underscore the calculated and impeccably executed nature of SpaceX's ambitious endeavors, surpassing even the most optimistic projections. At this juncture, is there anyone casting doubts on SpaceX's readiness to achieve lunar landings before 2030? Does any skepticism persist regarding SpaceX's technical prowess and capabilities? These comprehensive advancements stand as a testament to the resounding affirmative response, dispelling any lingering uncertainties about SpaceX's capacity to fulfill these ambitious lunar missions. Some individuals, upon reviewing the renderings of the HLS Starship, may still harbor reservations or lack significant confidence in its potential accomplishments. The most notable concern for many revolves around the height of the Starship's elevator. While SpaceX's proposal for the Starship Lunar Lander is undoubtedly unique, it presents a considerable challenge due to its towering size and weight. The massive 50-meter stack of separate spacecraft with the crew cabin at the peak would necessitate NASA astronauts to navigate a several-story ladder when traveling to and from the lunar surface. This ladder is significantly taller than the one used in the Apollo program, which NASA already had reservations about. Navigating such a tall ladder in the cumbersome and imprecise Lunar Extravehicular Activity spacesuit would be extremely challenging and relatively risky. This isn't really a great design for a lander, and that's because, really, Starship was never intended to be a lander. Starship is primarily an orbital vehicle, the upper stage of the whole launch stack atop a super heavy booster, and was primarily designed for that role, which is why it looks like, well, a rocket. This speaks volumes about the flexibility of Starship to the extent that it can even be adjusted to suit this specific purpose. In the national team's defense, it's safe to say that demonstrated reliability would be an absolute necessity for NASA to ever accept that solution. Of course, SpaceX could feasibly include a hand-cranked backup system and a ladder on Starship's exterior in the event of total system failure, but both backups would still pose risks similar to or greater than the national team's ladder. However, the fact that SpaceX has tested a prototype of the Starship Moon Elevator makes it challenging for me to believe that the company won't ultimately produce a safe, reliable elevator by 2026 when Artemis 3 begins. Indeed, SpaceX is entirely capable of accomplishing that. Just take a comprehensive look at everything SpaceX has achieved in what is considered a relatively short period in the rocket manufacturing industry. SpaceX has produced no fewer than 30 Starship prototypes and conducted numerous wet dress rehearsals and static fires, coupled with high-altitude test flights and comprehensive orbital testing. Now, the Starship Moon Elevator is just a part addition to the list of these low-cost achievements. The activities in manufacturing, testing, and repair seem to pose no challenge for SpaceX. That's why NASA made the trusted choice for the Human Landing System program, opting for the lunar variant of Starship. And perhaps even SpaceX itself may not fully realize the extent to which Starship will revolutionize activities on the lunar surface. In the years ahead, the lunar variant of Starship holds the promise of advancing NASA's objectives, building upon the milestones set forth since 1972. The HLS variant of the Starship isn't solely a boon for enhancing human exploration capabilities on the moon. It stands as a gateway to unlocking potential avenues for space industrialization. Designed specifically to transport substantial payloads affordably to the lunar surface, SpaceX's formidable mega rocket holds the capability to ferry full-scale mining and construction equipment intact. Such cargo, weighing between 40 to 60 tons on Earth, constitutes a pivotal component for establishing fundamental lunar infrastructure essential for economic development and commerce. The significance of equipment within this size range cannot be overstated. It forms the backbone for laying down the groundwork necessary to foster economic growth on the moon and cultivate its commercial potential. What's even more pivotal for lunar advancement is that the diversified Starship variants will facilitate the establishment
establishment of construction facilities, accelerating the expansion of an economy on this abundantly resourced natural satellite. And that's it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comment section below because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. And so for that, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time. Until then, happy holidays.